So as far as we can tell, we are the only species that has grown so sophisticated that we've thrown ourselves headlong into this game of trying to figure out our own programming language. So it would be as though your computer started um, controlling its own peripheral devices and pulled off its cover and pointed its webcam at its own circuitry to try to figure out what it was made out of. That's exactly what we've done. And what we've discovered under the hood there is the most complicated device we've ever found in the universe. First slide, please. Um, what we found is the human brain, which is, which is about three pounds. And as Rama alluded to, it's the most complicated device we've ever found in the universe. So it contains tens of billions of neurons. These are the specialized cell types of the brain. And the thing to appreciate is that each neuron is as complicated as the city of San Diego. Every single neuron has the entire human genome in it. It's trafficking millions of proteins. And these are connected in such density to one another that we have hundreds of trillions of connections between them. And this means that if you were to take just a cubic centimeter of brain tissue, you have as many connections in there as you have stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So it's a tremendously complicated uh, system that we're talking about, and it's one that actually bankrupts human language. We have to invent new strains of mathematics to even talk about it. But it's not just the complexity that's the, uh, that's the amazing part, it's that one of the most significant intellectual developments of our species has been the recognition that somehow fundamentally we are irrevocably tied to this three pounds of completely alien tissue. This is where we have the, our joys and our loves and our fears, the agony, the ecstasy. And how do we actually know that? How do we know that's in this tissue and not in your pinky, for example? And the answer is, if you were to damage your pinky in a car accident, you would be sad about that, but you wouldn't be any different as a person. But if you were to damage an equivalently sized chunk of brain tissue, that can change you entirely. That can change your decision making, or your risk aversion, or your capacity to see colors, or name animals, or understand music. And this is how we know that this three pounds of wet biological electrochemical tissue is somehow very closely tied to what we are. And the most amazing thing to me, being a neurobiologist, about this whole thing is that essentially all of the massive operations of this incredibly vast machinery runs underneath the hood of conscious awareness. So it essentially runs invisibly, just like Thomas was talking about with transparency. So when I lift a cup of coffee to my mouth, that's underpinned by a lightning storm of neural activity, and yet it's completely invisible to me. And if it weren't for neurobiology, we wouldn't even have any reason to suspect the existence of muscles and tendons and nerves and electrical signals, right? Because we don't have access to any of that. It just seems totally effortless to us. And of course, it's not just lifting a, a cup of coffee. It's everything we do in life. It's uh, recognizing a friend's face or getting a joke or driving a car or falling in love, any of these things happen completely underneath the hood of conscious awareness. And this is what leads to the idea of the unconscious mind. And it turns out that the conscious part of you, which is the part that flickers to life when you wake up in the morning, that is the smallest bit of what's happening in the brain. It's like the broom closet in the mansion of the brain. So, so think about what it's like when you have an idea, you say, oh, I just thought of something. Well, it wasn't actually you that thought of it, right? Your brain's been working on that behind the scenes for hours or days, consolidating information, simulating different possibilities, evaluating them. At some point, it gets served up to your consciousness, and you say, oh, I'm a genius. But it wasn't really you, right? So as Carl Jung said, in each of us, there is another who we do not know. As Pink Floyd put it, there's someone in my head, but it's not me. <laughs> 